Hey, what's up, guys? Back again with another video in the Java tutorial series. Uh, this episode, we're going to be going over the throws keyword in exceptions. And uh, yeah, so but first, uh, we're going to go over the different exceptions that we'll be working with so we get a better understanding of what they are and how many there are and yeah, just stuff like that. So I have this website here. I'll link it in the description. So go make sure you check it out, maybe bookmark it because it's very useful. It provides um, all of the unchecked and checks checked uh, exceptions, which I'll explain in a second. So um, as you can tell, there's 15 unchecked and there's say, seven checked. So yeah, so you can play around. There's one you can play around with these, but there's one we already saw here. We've been using the arithmetic uh, exception, and then we have the other one here, the array index out of bounds exception. So you know you can use all of these if you want to. So. Um, yeah, so the point of this episode, we're going to be creating our own exceptions. Um, we're going to be throwing them as you would use the, that's the terminology you would use whenever you create an exception is throwing the exception. So, um, yeah, so we can create any of these and, uh, yeah, and we can do these too, but, uh, maybe not. We'll see why. So we have to understand what unchecked exceptions are and, uh, checked expressions are, I mean, exceptions and, um, an unchecked exception is an exceptions that are checked at runtime and not at compile time. So what that means is that the program will still run and uh, the error will occur during the program as it's running and then it will shut down. So the program will start and it will run smoothly and then it will shut down from the error, okay? If it's not handled, of course. But with checked expressions, the program will be compiled and it will, it will shut down because the exception, it won't even get to run because checked expressions are checked at compile time which is the thing that happens before the program is started so the uh, exception is found and then the program is shut down of course so that's the difference uh, unchecked is the program can run but it'll eventually shut down at runtime but the checked expressions are shut down at compile time so the program never gets to, a chance to run so hopefully that helps a little bit so um we're gonna move this on to my second screen if you have one that's cool so, um, cause we're going to be using them a little bit. So now let's get into the throws keyword. Uh, like I said, with the throws keyword, we can create our own exceptions and, uh, yeah, so we can do that by creating a new object of the type exception or something like that. I don't remember which object it is, but yeah, I'm pretty sure it's exception. But anyway, to do that, you use the keyword throws. So throws and then new because it's an object, right? New. And then we choose any of the exceptions that we have here. Okay. On the unchecked. Okay. So we'll choose, um, let's choose null pointer exception. So that's one we want to choose. And uh, we actually have um, the choice to put a parameter here. And um, what the parameter is, it's a string. And this is a string that you can just provide a description of the exception if you want to. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's call it a uh, description so we can see how it will turn out. And then we'll do that. And we have a problem here, it looks like. Oh, I'm sorry. It's not the throws keyword. It's the throw keyword. I got mixed up on that. Oopsies. So next episode, we'll be going over the throws keyword. But anyway, the point is uh, we have the throw keyword here and uh, we use throw and then the object and there we go. So you run that and let's see what happens. So we get a error message, of course, because it was set, sent to the default handler because we didn't catch it or anything like that. But uh, as you can tell, our description is down here, too. So that's how that works out. And you, you don't even have to have this. You can run it without it if you want to. So yeah, it works the same way. Pretty good, right? So we're throwing an exception and it's sent directly to the default handler because we didn't catch it. So let's try and catch it then. So let's create a try statement. So try and then catch here. And then we'll catch the null pointer exception because that's what you have to do. Remember? And then we got to give it a name, of course. I'll just use E like always. I'm always just use E, I think. E, I think, not E. Um, so we got to put this in here, of course, where we throw the exception. So that's where it goes. And then, of course, we do whatever we want here. We can have whatever code we want. So we can say there was a an exception. But And uh, remember, of course, if we handle exceptions ourselves, the program doesn't have to shut down, which is awesome. And we're going to print out what the exception was still. Great. So we get there was an exception because it was handled. It was caught here. And then this block of code was run. And then it prints out the exception like we told it to. So great, everything works perfectly. Um, but now you have to realize, how does this work? Well, you're creating a new uh, exception, I have trouble saying that, <laughs> and it instantly is thrown, right? But once it's thrown, it looks for a catch so it can be caught. 
And of course, as you know, if it's not caught, it'll be sent to the default handler and you know what happens then. But let's say that this one did not match, right? Null pointer exception. Now let's rename it to arithmetic. Uh, let's do a rat one, I guess. Array index out of bounds exception. So that one's not going to match. So obviously it's going to go to the default handler. Handler. But let's say we enclose it with another try statement. We can actually do that pretty easily. So try, and then we'll put um, this inside of here. And what we're doing, we're just doing a nested try statement, just like last episode, right? So catch, and we're going to catch it now. So null pointer exception. And you can go as many, uh, you can nest it as many times as you want. You can go on pretty far, um, just as long as that eventually it'll match it, unless it'll be sent to the default handler. So um, yeah, so now we found our match, right? So we, let's just do it again here, have the same code. Great. So now we don't get an error because um, it uh, keeps looking, and it comes to here, and it finds it, and then does whatever it has to do here. So that works perfectly. That's really cool. And um, yeah, so the next thing I want to show you is a cool little program. Not really um, super cool, but it's pretty cool. Um, it's basically the same thing as this, but um, it shows it a little more clearly. So what we're going to do is have a, let's get rid of this. We're going to have another class, and we'll just, for simplicity, we'll just have it out here. So class, we got to give it a name, um, random class name, you know, just a class name, right? And then um, within that class, we'll have a, a method, and we'll call it void, void, um, exception stuff because I'm super creative of course so within exception stuff we'll have our own try statement and then we're going to throw an exception manually of course so throw new and we'll do let's just do null pointer again I like that one pretty simple again you can throw any unchecked exception if you want to and later on in a second I'm going to show you why you don't want to use check ex checked exceptions but anyway so we're doing this here and then we're going to catch it with something here, let's see, and we're gonna catch it right, so we're gonna do catch, um, oh, we gotta have it here, of course, so null point exception E, and then within that we'll have uh, this exception was caught inside of the first method. We'll just say inside of the method because we're only going to have one method. You'll see what I'm doing in a second. Don't worry if this is a little confusing. And then what we're going to do is really cool. We can re-throw it. So right here, we can see we already declared an object. And then we can reference it here, of course. So let's do throw E. So this what, what this does is re-throws the exception. So it repeats this all over again. It's just going to re-throw it. But now we have a problem. We re-threw uh, re it, but we don't have anything to catch it. So we have to enclose it with another one when we use it. So let's go ahead and... and uh, our main method, and we're going to call this uh, method. Oh, we got to make a new object of. Actually, we'll just make this static, so static void, so we don't have to make a new object. Of course, if you remember, uh, with static methods inside of a class, you don't have to have an object to reference the method. So that's pretty cool. Um, so we're going to do random class name. You can just reference the class directly, of course. And we're going to run all of this, of course, because that's how methods work. And uh, let's see what happens. And you might think it'll just get handled right, but again, we're rethrowing it, so all this is going to go to hell. So, yeah, it's going to go to crap. So, what we have to do here, we're going to enclose it with another try statement. And we're going to move this inside of here, of course. And then we're going to catch the new statement that it throws, the one that it's rethrowing, you know. So, we're going to catch null pointer exception again. And then it was finally caught within the outer try statement okay so now let's see what happens let's print that out so it says this exception was caught inside of the method because initially we run this method and it's caught inside of here but then we re-throw it so it has to be caught again so we have this out outer uh, try statement and it catches again so it says it was finally caught with the outer try statement so yeah hopefully that shows how cool it is how if you re-throw it or throw it it will just, just have to be caught by an enclosing try statement, no matter the case. Hopefully that makes sense. So now what we're going to go over is we're going to get rid of this, and we're just going to go back to the first thing that we did, where we created a throw statement here. So throw, new, and then right here, we can choose to put an exception, right? We're, um, last time we put a unchecked 
exception, which of course is run at runtime or checked at runtime, and the program can run and all that. And we learned about that. But um, let's say we put a checked ex uh, exception. So let's go ahead and check. Let's see. Let's just choose one of these. We'll do class not found exception. Let's see what happens. I want to show you this because you might come across this problem if for some reason you chose a checked expression. So um, we chose that right here, right? Let's see. Right here. So we get an error, right? So this says unhandled exception. That is a problem because remember at runtime, or at compile time, it's run. So it needs to be handled before the program even compiles. So let's try doing that. So to try. Okie dokie. So now the error went away because we handled it right off the bat and we're good to go. It looks like it should work. Good. So we dodged the bullet, like we said. And um, yeah, so just know that when you have checked expression exceptions that you um, are you are that you're throwing, um, you have to handle them right off the bat because they're checked at compile time. And yeah, so just make sure you do that. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this little episode. If it was helpful, just leave a like. Um, there's a Discord in the description. You can join that. We can talk about programming, whatever you want to do. You can get help. But if you need any help, leave a comment if you want to. Or again, in the description, you can do that. I mean, the Discord. And um, yeah, so subscribe if you want to see more. And peace.